Okay. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to tonight's episode. The title of tonight's episode is Resurrection of the Great Vision of the Great Human Vision. And so I was wondering about morality and pretty much I looked at our civilization and I noticed we're a bunch of creatures on a rock behaving in a certain pattern. These patterns based on what has happened in our history are recognizable. Based on what has not happened in our history, we cannot recognize it. That means there's behaviors of human beings where we will be able to comprehend. They are in a sort of scope of uh, being given value, but there is some, some phenomena which is you cannot measure emptiness. You cannot measure the lack of effort that never led to anything. For me, human life has become... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> it has become an obsession of self. There is a very profound poem. quote is from a man named Molana Rumi. He says, I was mineral, I died and I became a plant. I was a plant and I died and I rose to animal. I was an animal and then I died and I became man. When shall I fear, when was I less by dying? Why should I fear death? When was I less by dying? Once more I shall die as man to soar with angels blessed, but even from angelhood. But even from angelhood I must go on to become what no mind could ever conceive. So pretty much this dude was was saw himself as a sort of attention that has been moving through various forms of phenomena. So this brings a new kind of vibe to our civilization, to our society. It puts all the kind of discriminations we find on on a level on levels of gender, on levels of classification of society and hierarchies and various economical statuses, suddenly our differences will no longer bother us, they will unite us. We will see that we're each a part of this kind of social mind. Humanity is the collective effort of the civilization to remember itself. When I wondered why are people alive, I realized it's for them to find a movie they can be. Primarily, we, we choose to add meaning and dimension, tasteful dimension to our life through of concepts. I suddenly realize you cannot have enemies because every enemy you have seen, you have never looked at you, you have never looked through their eyes. You are in some sense uh, the creation of the value behind people's eyes when you see them. So for me, life has in some sense been re-encapsulated with an unknown flavor. In some sense, when I was younger, I was seeking knowledge. When I became older, I recognized I am the unknown. Civilization has always tried to reveal the unknown. <coughs> You know, a 
very profound sentence finds me from Christianity, and it is, ask and you shall receive. I found that to be a kind of supreme, ask and you shall receive is kind of saying like, be a pattern and it will echo in various dimensions of your mind. Recognize this life is a classification of attention between thought and matter, okay? What we consider to be thoughts are fueled by our past. A person who doesn't have a past cannot have a thought, cannot even have a future. The mind is very powerful. I've often contemplated this situation where where I changed the song. <laughs> Yeah, I like this class. Our species doesn't realize it is awake once. People don't realize their days happen once. And it's kind of like we are the pioneers. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> we are the honest citizen suddenly finding itself in the dishonesty of the inner and outer realm. We are waking up as materialistic creatures to a sight that was never only matter. We are recognizing that consciousness and matter, ancient traditions, they said Purusha and Prakriti. What that meant is it was, it was the simultaneous dance of phenomena and the observer of phenomena. Ancient cultures saw the being to be a mind before a body, so the universe originated from a supreme free will, which was God's will of an Okay, but then there was also the notion that the secular mind found a way to release itself from having to abide by the forces of nature. I always saw rationality as a bunker for attention. For me, life cannot have an instruction booklet because it has not even happened yet to have an instruction. That means your moment changes. <coughs> the resurrection of the great human vision is an implication that when people shift the way they are individuals they have innately shifted like instantly shifted also the collective vision they said enlightenment takes an instant you know all these yogis meditating in caves they, they walked past the instruction that it takes an instant to get enlightened. The reason it takes an instant because it cannot be in time. The intellect doesn't realize, but your intelligence right now, I will kind of give this estimate for now. This is, you could say, Mr. Within's ratio. <coughs> <coughs> Believe it or not, 70% of your intelligence is happening naturally. You are a process of nature, but you are a process of nature that realizes it's a process of nature. Many animals, many insects, many just when we look at the life on this planet, it listens to its design, yet it doesn't know of its design. So we are the eyes of the universe that could see it, could see the universe. We are the universe's attempt to look at itself in the mirror and realize that ambition is the evolution of vision. That means we should walk in ways that when our future children's 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 children should see us, they will be like, holy shit, we can live like that. <laughs> we have to attempt. The, my, my notion is that I, I realize that you cannot get rid of time for your physical body. So kind of like time and space, as you move through it, as you change throughout this life, it's as if life is drawing your existence. Okay, and so most people, because they think they're a thought, their truth has to be a thought also. It is very few people on, on, on this rock in the middle of nowhere who realize and uh, all truths are empty. They are empty because you have to start from a clarity. You have to look at this pay piece of paper with markings on it, writings on it, and for a second realize the paper was pure emptiness and then stuff began written on it, uh, began being written on it. So in some sense, there was first space, and then existence occurred in space. 
So fundamentally, if there is a chance, 0 0.000, whatever amount of zeros you'd like, percent chance that our intelligence exists as a sort of space to itself, this suddenly implies that matter has never been matter. There has been eyes here prior to matter even entering. So we tap a notion where I call it pure awareness. You know, a very bright but ill-natured kind of, you know, secular friend of mine, very intelligent guy, he said this idea that he believed in what was a pure thought. And I asked him, what is a pure thought? And I recognized he could not explain it because it was just the thought without any context. You see, as I'm speaking to you right now, ladies and gentlemen, my attention oscillates between the concept and the context. So pretty much, I, f I focus on an idea for these talks, and then my attention is constantly zooming in and out of the personal. Because I've recognized my intelligence not to be a static image. If you ask me who I am, I could tell you how can I tell you I am the movement of the world. All at once. The boundaries are self-ignited. The attention is self-contained. It contains itself for, as a self for eons. You don't recognize. You are a sort of an immaterial field of intelligence liberated prior to the conception that had to become the chain of the world. You see, the world was crafted out of phenomena. We, in some sense, our languages exist because voices are heard by our ears. If suddenly people could not hear, language will cease to exist. You know, writing will exist, but if people could not see, we see it is the reliance of our sensory perception. So what's very fascinating is that I consider language to be a subjective phenomenon, but this subjective phenomenon is kept by objective forces. So that means, are, do we have free will or is it just atoms moving in space? Are our minds the hallucinations of atoms, of neurons? What is occurring and what is this life? And so we find that we have to either accept a, a blueprint of knowledge or we have to wonder about the unknown. And Mr. Within is saying that it is, it is a very interesting time. It's usually, this is when a renaissance usually happens. And I believe there's going to be, for the first time, a global renaissance. <clears throat> the era of multidimensionality, but the multidimensional, multidimensional rebellions within. Pretty much the creatures on this planet are no longer just functioning as an intelligence that is objective. You recognize your attention is the ultimate navigator of your being. So as I'm speaking to you right now, there is a sort of intelligence in the subconscious, unconscious aspects of my mind. So you can say that when you go wondering about your intelligence, it's going to be like some part of it is, is going to be in the shade, is going to be in the darkness of your mind, and some part of it is going to be in the light. you got to understand that it's, it's, it's a light beam entering our eyes and we see the world. <clears throat> that is super strange. For me, I was shocked when I realized light from one light beam, like from the sun, sorry, from, from one sphere, from one orb, you know, light goes through in, and, and enters the other orb, enters our eyes. So for me, when I heard that religion said first there was the word, and some people believe re the religious number, age of the universe is like 6,000 years old. They believe the universe is 6,000 years old. This is religious fundamentalism at its core. But I am telling you, the reason they believe that I feel that it can all fit in. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I recognize war can be prevented by adding dimensions where the ignorance of each is not considered to be factual. So that means you stop thinking your enemy is your enemy and the enemy stops thinking you're the enemy. What are, what are you then? You're just beings. You don't understand how much language is being used like fashion. We're, we're not just dressing ourselves in clothing, in cloth. We are dressing ourselves in conceptual agreements of the way the axis of the universe is kept philosophically, introspectively. Your intelligence has to recognize that it is kept by acti uh, it's kept by activity. Do you see? That means if I tell you who's more exciting, somebody who's doing nothing or somebody who's like breakdancing, you will look at the guy who's breakdancing and you'll be like, okay, definitely this guy's more exciting. Look at what he's doing. You know, but you see, life will le lead you to a place where you will have to confront your order and you will have to confront your chaos. If the chaos of, you, uh, if the chaos of your lifetime found you earlier than your order, then smile. Because what else can a chaotic being do? You see, the problem is 
that if if people went to hell and never realized they came from somewhere else before and that's why they went to hell they will feel they are hellish creatures it is it is it is in some sense breaking the shackle what that means is what's going to happen is that we're going to see we're so different as nations and as as, as just various uh, ways that this species has grouped itself and these groups whether ethnic or whatever they're going to suddenly realize they're all different parts of the brain. That means when your friend tells you a good joke at, at the pub, you know what that is? That is a, new, a, a, a neural activity in the brain of mankind. The species has to communicate. It is the era of advanced communication. I use the term pilots of consciousness. <clears throat> this is a very important term for me. It's a term I've created. No, I saw nobody acknowledging it this way and I was like, why not? You see, I believe that we have to entertain the notion that if we are to continue as a species, we will eventually have to wonder about galactic personalities. What that means is we're going to, our morality is going to extend beyond the clouds just like our, like, uh, rocket ships do. For me, it's vision that creates the world, and vision has to be activated. You see, your intelligence was activated in a system already with design. So when I open my eyes in this world, I, as I think all children find themselves, they are, in some sense, humble and <clears throat> very... The child doesn't resist the world because the vastness is allowed to it. This is why children, if you ask them a question and you just hear what answer their mind attempts, you're, it's going to be endlessly more creative than yours. Because it's in a world where permission is allowed. Do you understand the, the biggest inefficiency of the civilization is people thinking they are weak. How could you be weak? You have continued four billion years. Sometimes when I walk back from home and it's a hot day and I'm just like, in that kind of tired fatigueness, you know, like, oh my God, the sun is not making it easy. And like, you know, <laughs> I have a sweater on and it's easier to have it on and move with, rather than carrying it, you know. I've gone into levels where the journey has been long. But I could tell you the value was in the recognition of why phenomena had endured so far. That means I realize if a part of me doesn't care for my intelligence, it probably hasn't understood it. Many things, if you notice, you don't care about or you hate or your enemies, they're things you have not seen properly. Okay, when you have doubt, this is why the mysterious draw the attention, yet will not reveal to the attention. I had to make a choice. Should I fit into in the story of the world or should I wonder where the stories of the world arise in my mind? Life is an opportunity. After eons, civilization rebuilds itself to this momentum. For me, it's uh, there's a glory to being alive as a human being, which we don't recognize, and I don't know how to shout this out, that the only choice you have in this life, if you choose to be conscious and to have an individualized free will, is advancement. And where can an individual go? Only to the collective. The child ran away from home only to realize that the world is, 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 is the child's home. But then the child realized that it doesn't matter where you live. It matters how your mind embraces this phenomena that's here. That's it. Your karma and everything is based on how you're acknowledging all this phenomena here, which we're calling the world. So if you consider that you have a brain, and this brain is leading to a mind that where the mystery of consciousness contemplates reality as of individualized free will, with an instant ability to create. What, you know what this means? This means either matter was never matter or consciousness was beyond matter. That's it. That's where all the philosophies will go. I will tell you the edge of science. It is trying to measure infinity. And I will tell you the edge of religion. 
it is the stepping out of a loop of behavior. And I will tell you the edge of spirituality, to learn to leave the soul of the world alone, to recognize the value of peace, the ability of space to, in some sense, inspire innovation beyond the realms of your perception. You don't recognize it. everything changes. That's why we can write diaries. If you were experiencing the same day every day, you did your diary, you just needed to write one page and for the rest of your life, it was some sort of loop of a life. But you got to step out of these loops. You got to step out of this program. You got to recognize the vision of reality, the value of the moment, why we're alive as a civilization, why there's even the ability. I find it too unique as if the puzzle pieces are in front of us. We just have to take a step forward towards conscious living. We have to live as conscious beings that their value for the world generates from the world. You see, for me, it's a rebellion against the mother. <coughs> it is the child who did not understand the opportunity to be grateful. Sometimes I, I, it's very, very awesome when you get rid of your ego your personality frees itself uh, from a sort of loop of emotions, of low emotions. You suddenly begin experiencing what I like to call high intensity emotions. High intensity emotions will be, that means your thoughts are changing quicker and quicker. Eventually your thoughts will change so quickly, like they will accelerate in your attention as if you're looking at this river just move quicker and quicker and quicker. Eventually you begin to see that through the acceleration of linear form, the non-linear space is revealed. So when you move something so fast, it's as if it never moved. You see? So what I'm trying to tell you is that you will reach that point metaphysically. And this metaphysics has to do with a sort of branch of philosophy that acknowledged that Rene Descartes was, to be honest, a kind of evoker of this concept on, on this currently, like in our civilization. He had the notion of the dualism of the mind and the body. Okay, so this means that your, your mind is not just from your brain, but it's being projected from there. So let's not deny it's not from the brain, but let's also wonder if it could not be. In the Lotus Sutra, there's a quote where, sa where it says, keep your mind alive and free without abiding in anywhere or anything. What that means is allow yourself to be free. Recognize the world is alive once every day. That's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. There is no greater teaching. There's nothing that anybody can teach you for you uh, better than the lesson morality of uh, mortality gives you. For me, I started to figure out what life means when I understood how the laws of the universe were kind of functions of my own mind. When I discovered this notion, there came this subtler humility. This humility was the ultimate surrender of the resistance I had to the truth of the world. Because you see, uh, Unfortunately, what happened is that there was a personal dimension to truth and there was an impersonal dimension of truth. Religion uh, was a story for the personal dimension of truth. Science was a method for the impersonal dimension of truth. When I say impersonal, that means the truth of the moment is not just real to one person, it is real to all, it is accessible to all. That means that was the mighty task of science to show the world that we can study the objective and it's real and let's not think that it's like let's not uh, uh, try to go to the stars in our imagination before we actually look at reality. So I honor science and I will in some sense support science but for me science is in some sense like not realizing that it's, um, its ego is destroying the spirit of an ancient community. It is denying it validity. It is so easy to break things, but it is hard for things to be made. I remember there was a moment I had where 300 of these talks I'd given, I think there was like overall maybe like 600 hours of footage of just me giving talks. 
and these 600 hours of talk suddenly got deleted. And I don't know how, it was some mystery. He literally fell on the ground in shock. It was a weird shock. It wasn't like a biological, physical shock. It was as if internally, something I had built over a long period of time, okay, after many nights, suddenly was not accessible. And this broke my heart because I felt in those moments of giving those talks that they, 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 it's like losing like, like your children. You know, that's how it feels when you do something worth living for and suddenly forget it, you know, or it's denied. <clears throat> <clears throat> so this, com this kind of notion commands the individual two possibilities of two routes of action. The individual first has to figure out who they are and that will eventually be a sort of acceptance and content contentment of what the most simplest way your intelligence is here. That means people, you can't compare beauty. You know why? Because beauty belongs to the world. It cannot be hidden. <clears throat> this is why a beautiful truth is remembered as a kind of wall of heaven that was suddenly noticed with a hole inside. There's many ways I see that life moves. And as it has moved in many ways, it has brought forth various ways that language has been absorbed by the intelligence. So the intelligence of the human being now begins to notice that it has been narrating itself as the homo sapiens. The homo sapien is actually trying to tell the children of the world, hey kids of the future generations, I know technology is cool, but let us not forget we are an evolutionary animal with unanswered questions. And these unanswered questions will require us to return to nature to rediscover ourselves. That means it is easy to jump into a metal box and try to simulate heaven eternally. It is very easy to find an, a hollow infinity. That means, trust me, the moment you could see like something small being hollow, you can see something big being hollow. You can see how the world is a container of form. And how these forms arise from your acceptance of how your attention lingered on phenomena perhaps longer than it had to. So I, I find that this is what's missing in the civilization. An ultimate story that every, if every human being heard the, the story, they would, under, they would no longer have a question of what is my purpose. They would come into terms with four billion years of evolution and how the science project uh, called humanity is here now. You recognize the immediate purpose of your natural design is to be your design. No animal has existed as sophisticated as you and now you exist, so appreciate it, enjoy it, recognize it is the opportunity of a lifetime to be present in a world. There are states of consciousness where it is not materialistically oriented. That means, I'm telling you, there's ways that intelligence exists in this world where it is just empty sight of space. It has nothing to do with form. We are oscillating between individual kind of beings and collective beings. Until you recognize the collective nature, your relationship with your mind is predominantly like a linguistic one. So I'm telling you there is something, a concept I call the linguistic simulation. This is your subjective self's kind of story. It is not enough when we are at, when the species is at war with the forces that in some sense threaten its continuity. Nature is brilliant because it created us, but nature is cruel because it knows where the creations will go. Once the being finds a way where they can acknowledge these three states as one, where suddenly things starting for you in your life, things 
in some sense being maintained in your life and things in some sense ending in your life. The start, the middle change, the end. You see, life is, uh, is artwork from the beginning. We don't realize it. This is why I chose to see myself in society fundamentally through different professional approaches to the world. So in some sense, how can I tell you? My mind found a way to recognize collectivity. It found this through a sort of intelligence that was accessible to me prior to, our, to me learning language. And because I preserved the memory, it's very fascinating. Sometimes the child doesn't want to save the world and doesn't want to, in some sense, enslave the world. The child doesn't have an opinion yet. It is the beauty of silence where all words have stepped out of. All words have stepped out of. The glory of the species in the, is, is, believe it or not, in the eyes of an evolving creature on a rock in the middle of nowhere. We have, we have one lifetime to see beyond the time. So guys, the, my, my laptop's battery is dying, so unfortunately I have to end the talk. I want to thank you for tuning in, and I, probably I'm going to talk more about this, maybe a new talk or a part two of this. But I want to tell you, the great human vision is acceptance of reality and clarity. It is to honor the presence of how intelligence is here and how it has journeyed so far. Eventually, as uh, Matsuyo Basho, this Japanese sage says, the journey itself is my home. Ladies and gentlemen, this world is the paradise we will build. Much blessings and namaste.